Hey everyone, uh, back at it again. Uh, I got two videos in the queue, uh, one that I just haven't had a chance to go through and edit, and I'm making one right now, so hopefully I have two back-to-back -back videos coming. Um, this one is, uh, just like the title says, um, what I had to do to install 10-inch uh, bars to my uh, 93 Honda Shadow 600. Now, the big thing is, there's always the question is, what's the tallest bar you can put on a, on a Honda Shadow 600 without having to change all the stock cables um and that's 10 inches and i and i've done some you know a lot of research on that uh as far as it, is it just like plug and play or whatever and you know you get a lot of mixed reviews yeah yeah it fits it's tight you have to you know run your cables and you have to get creative with changing where your cables run um and uh so anyway i thought i'd just make a quick video and show you you know what i did to make my 10 inch bars fit so um these are them right here i bought them off of jp cycles they're actually say that they only fit um you know harley bikes uh and probably just because of the width on them uh, i don't know i don't know much about bikes anyway but um so i don't know on on harleys if if these mounts are generally thinner than they are on hondas um but I measured mine and they were five and three quarters from outside to outside. And these measure six inches. And at first I was like, oh, sweet. You got a quarter inch to play with. Everything's good. Well, the problem with that is where they weld the bars um, right here on the corner, um, the inside, you can't see it, uh, but the inside corner of these bars has part of the weld is sticking out. So it's not a perfect 90 degrees. So the problem with that is... Um, that weld you know sticks up and out beyond the bar here and beyond the bar here so there goes your quarter inch of play so it doesn't fit at all so you can probably see already that i took and i ground down um a little bit of curvature on the outside of the mount and what you can also you can't see on the inside of the mount i had to kind of grind away so it fit now i got them to fit good enough um so that the bars are actually on there. Uh, and I just took it out for a test ride. So before we go any further, the, the, the 10 inch bars for me, me being 6'3", so I'm a tall guy on a kind of a small bike, was much more comfortable to have my hands, you know, just more in line with my shoulders and I'm not as leaned forward. I think one of the biggest things with bobber uh, motorcycles is <laughs> I see this a lot online and people look at the bike and they say, wow, it looks really cool, but it also looks super uncomfortable. And people are, you know, after a while, they, 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 uh, they're not so shy about saying, yeah, it's pretty uncomfortable, <laughs> but it looks pretty cool, right? So, uh, and uh, I, don't, I don't plan on taking this bike very far, but it didn't take long for me to be uncomfortable with shorter bars. So the 10-inch bars for me, you know, they, I think they look a lot better, yes, but if they're also a lot more comfortable for me. Um, so anyway, with that being said, I uh, just took it out for a ride. It's really awesome. I think it, you know, I think it's going to work out really well. Um, but when I was backing it into the garage, uh, pulling on the handlebars, I was able to actually slightly move them back. So I think I still need to take these mounts off and uh, I'm going to take them into work where I have a milling machine and mill them down quite a bit to the point where, um, well, I say quite a bit, but enough that I can get a much better clamping power. Um, they're not loose. By any means they're not loose uh but pulling on them to really pull the bike back into the garage they moved slightly so obviously i want to get those as tight as possible so they don't move um so right off the bat that was my one modification i'm, I'm uh the first modification i'm sure there are other bars that are a little bit wider i was looking around online i was having trouble figuring out what style i wanted i like this style i just happened to see them the measurements look like they would fit they are obviously a little thin um, so, but whatever, that's, I don't really care if I make these modifications. I mean, these mounts, they're just aluminum mounts. They weren't anything special. So, um, that's the route I'm going to go. I like the look of the bars, So I'm going to, I'm going to modify the mounts to fit. Now the cables, um, that's always the big question is like, oh, you know, like how is it going to work? And I kind of tried to mock them up a little bit before I bought the bars and it looked like it was going to actually be plenty of room. And it's not exactly plenty of room. Um, they'll fit. And there's one that I'm still suspect about, it, which is the clutch cable, but I'll get to that in a sec. But um, so, but, you know, let's just get right to it here. So 
Um, I say that, but I've been talking for like, you know, I don't know how long this video has been going on here for five minutes. But the brake cable, um, I was able to leave right where it is. And the nice part about that is that's probably the worst one. If you have to move any of them, that would be the worst one, I guess. Mainly because if you have to take it apart, then you have to bleed it, which apparently isn't too hard to do. Um, but it's an extra step versus like a throttle cables or clutch cables. You can just kind of take them off and then put them back on. No bleeding or anything like that, right? So, um, so fortunately, the brake cable still has enough play. Uh, it runs down inside here. And, um, and loops around and you can see there's even a lot of play right here. So, so that's cool. So I was able to leave that. The, um, the tachometer, which has nothing to do with the handlebars, um, not tachometer, the speedometer cable, which has nothing to do with the handlebars. Um, first of all, I, I needed to move the, the throttle cables because they were going on the outside of the speedometer cable. So, um, that's an easy switch, uh, if you're not gonna take your throttle cables off, uh, this is actually really easy. You just come on down where it hooks up to the bike in the front here. Uh, one screw, it comes out, and then everything just kind of feeds right up, and I was able to pull the uh, speedometer cable out, run it in front of the throttle cables, and then right back down. So that was a, that was a pretty easy one. Um, although, uh, now that I'm saying, you know, now that I'm saying all that, the, the, the throttle cable itself is in the right spot but just because it's in the right spot doesn't mean it went on the handlebars correctly so um i did it backwards i actually so here we go so here's a good tip i made this harder for myself i mounted the bars and then i started mounting everything after the fact right well the problem is is you can't you can't these, these throttle cables aren't long enough unless you start detaching them which is what i did i detached them down here um and then now I had all sorts of room I could pull them forward in order for me to get the throttle onto the handlebars. Um, and I was like, you know, take all this apart and everything to get it on. But like what I could have done is just put everything on the handlebars first while the handlebars were like down here, you know, not attached to the bike with plenty of cable room. Um, so you might want to think about doing all that. And then uh, because if you do that, you don't have to take apart the throttle housing down here um, and the cables and detach everything. Not that it's hard. It's just, why, you know, why not? Why not? Why do all that extra work um, like I did? So, um, so as far as the right side is concerned um, with the brake and the throttle, um, the throttle cables, that was the only big thing I had going on there. And like I said, that could have been avoided, but, you know, you can avoid that, hopefully, if you watch this video first. And then the last thing was the um, was the clutch cable. So I did move the clutch cable. Um, I disengaged the clutch cable down here where it attaches to the actual you know clutch housing, um, and I did disengage it here from the mount. But there are mounts inside the frame um, in here which are impossible to get to unless you really start you know doing some surgery. So. Keep that in mind. The 10 inch bars will work. They're tight. I'll show you where the cable goes, where it used to go up top here in a second. But if you're gonna go any bigger than 10 inches, you're gonna need to put a longer clutch cable in. And that means you're gonna have to get inside here and get the whole clutch cable out, which looks like a pain in the neck. So just letting you know. Um, all right, so the clutch cable used to go here it is right here. It used to go underneath the top crown here and come out through the front and come up. But that loop going around the head tube of the frame and down inside the frame here was not that much further, but it is technically further. So it's, it's shorter if you run uh, the clutch cable up and then underneath the inside of the frame right here, out the left side, on the back side of the top um, of the top crown of the fork, and then up. So it saves you, even if it's just a, an inch. Um, you need all the length you can get. That's probably so. This is the one. This is the hardest one, or the shortest one, or the tightest one cable um, that is, is going to give you the most problem with this 10-inch bars. Um, the other problem I didn't really think to even ask. 
I just kind of found out as I was doing this was I know 10 inch bars are the max for the Honda 600s, but is that 10 inch bars plus these mounts or is it supposed to be 10 inches from here, which means you should only get like eight inch bars because these are like two inches. Um, well, everywhere I've, I've read it's like, oh, 10 inch bars, 10 inch bars, 10 inch bars. And nobody really ever made that big deal about saying, well, it's 10 inches from here. So I just kind of went with it and it works. So I have these studs, which are about two inches up off the crown and or an inch and a half or so off the crown, plus the 10 inch bar here. Um, yeah, really, it's like an inch and a half from here to here, plus 10 inches up. So, so there you go. That's my setup and that's how it works. Um, so the clutch cable, it is kind of funky. It's there or whatever. Um, and I'm still, the jury is still out on whether or not I'm going to have to really deal with this or not. But um, I'm going to take this boot off. Hold on one sec. Okay, we're back. Um, so I took the boot off just to show you this is a hard curved piece of metal uh, that goes on to the, to the cable housing here. But it's just so it can kind of come out and, um, and come into the adjustment screw. Uh, and you can see that it's supposed to be sitting inside the adjustment screw. And it is sitting inside the, adjust the adjustment screw. But this is coming out in this direction. And this is coming out not parallel. You can see it's kind of angled down a little bit. And why? That's because we're kind of stretched, we're stretched to the max here. So um, it's in there, it's staying in there. Uh, when I first installed it, it was kind of popping out by itself. And, you know, like the clutch would still work, but now the cable is like kind of unsupported. You can see the cable right inside there, kind of, yeah, inside that gap. Well, if this is not, if this um, corner piece, this metal corner piece is not inside the adjustment screw, it's just kind of like flopping out here. Now the cable's kind of flopping out and you don't want to run it like that. I mean, it's not like you're going to get stranded somewhere. You can get home, and the clutch still works, it's fine, but you don't want to be like using it like that permanently because it's going to wear away the cable and then eventually something's going to snap. So, but my, uh, so it's in right now and that's fine and it works and that's great, but it is kind of putting pressure on this adjustment screw. So I don't know if this is going to like slowly eat away. It almost kind of looks like it is like bending it or whatever. So, um, I think I'm still going to look into that. What I've done when I first had this set up last night, I kind of had these, the clutch uh, lever mechanism up a little higher, and that was putting even more pressure on it. So I've kind of tilted it down a little bit, but you can only go so far down with the lever until it's uncomfortable and you can't reach it with your hand, right? So um, so to wrap it up, that is the this is this was the worst one was the clutch cable, and that was the tightest one getting it getting it to, you know, be where it needs to be. And like I said, I, I don't think it's still exactly good. I think it's like 85 to 90% there, you know, it's pretty good, but I think, uh, I need to keep an eye on it and see if I need to make a modification. And if I do, and if I have to get a longer cable, like I said, I think that's going to be a pain in the neck. Um, but we'll see anyway. To answer people's questions, yeah, the 10 inch bars work. I think they look nice. I think they feel a lot better. Um, so, uh, yeah, hope, hopefully this helps. Good luck.